Welcome back. One of the most popular blogs in British Columbia is run by a thoughtful commentator named Alex Sakumis. Titled Rebel with a Clause, it can be visited online at alexgsakumis.com. At the age of 23, he was a political aide for BC's Conservative Premier Bill van der Zandt. And Sakumis spends his time now digging up news about politics in Western Canada. Welcome. Hi. So Alex, what do you put on your tax return as your job? <laughs> what do you, you know, there's a line there for occupation. Do you put blogger? No, I, what do you I, put, I put writer, uh, I, I put uh, businessman, I, you know. I is blogger whatever. ever in like one of those pull down menus these days? I mean, there are so many bloggers now. Is it being accepted as a profession? Uh, you know, it's, uh, it's more uh, uh, in vogue with bloggers than it is with others. Um, I, I think it's emerging. Uh, w with more credibility, uh, but I still think it's got a long way to go. There are blogs out there that are dangerously inaccurate and are just uh, exist simply for the smear job. Um, you know, many blogs, for example, that exist to discuss uh, sensitive issues uh, like the raid on the legislature a few years back, uh, those are run mostly, most of them are run by people who uh, have no other impetus other than to, or no other drive other than to elect the NDP. But what's wrong with that? I mean, the whole point of bloggers is that you're putting out a perspective, right? You're yeah. not going out there pretending you're some objective journalist. You're going out, I'm not saying you in particular, but in general, bloggers are often going Although there are agenda. some people who would agree Listen, with you that I'm not objective. Well, but you know, I mean, a, a lot of people say, look, this is my agenda and I, I, I'm you know, maybe I'm an investigative journalist and I'm, I'm furthering that, that agenda. Maybe I'm just a political commentator. What's wrong with having an agenda online? Uh, again, it depends on the issue that you're covering. I think there are other folks that like to have an agenda and, and want to move forward like that. Um, I don't. I do you consider yourself a journalist? Yeah. You do? Yeah. I didn't in the beginning. Mm -hmm. I fell into this job purely by accident. Yeah, how did uh, that happen? I was, uh, I was actually uh, one of the uh, crew that uh, helped elect Sam Sullivan mayor of Vancouver, uh, and I was very proud of, of that, and uh, Sam's a very decent fellow, uh, but I soon became very disgruntled with some of the um, extreme policies that he was uh, um, proffering, nothing, uh, none of which that he'd raised when we were, uh, when we were working to get him elected. And the Vancouver Sun asked me to do a special uh, uh, piece for them, and I did it. And then I got a whole pile of phone calls from a bunch of different newspapers and other news venues saying, hey, come on over. Hmm. So it, 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 it evolved. Well, you, you've break, broken some, some significant stories recently. Mm -hmm. um, I want to talk about them. And also, if, you know, not the, not the, you should, I, wanna, I don't want you to divulge sources, but maybe you can just tell us how you, what your method is. Uh, Tony Parsons leaving Global, that was one of the stories that you broke. Um, why do you think you were able to break that as opposed to other mainstream journalists who cover, I mean, there are a lot of people who cover media for The Sun and other papers who, who missed it? Uh, I am very blessed to have started out my career post-university in politics and then in business and then back to politics again and then back to business mm -hmm. and then into writing. Um, so, so you know I've, a lot of people. Yeah, yeah, yeah it, was, it was simply that. Uh, the Tony Parsons story actually was uh, uh, very interesting. I was having, uh, I was having lunch with uh, uh, one of my lawyers downtown, and we were—I hadn't seen him for uh, a fair bit—and we were talking. And at the next table uh, were some other friends who said, "Hey, how are you doing? How are things? How are things going? How are your kids? Your wife?" Uh, just you know, sort of the usual chit chat. And uh, one of them pulled me aside and said, "Hey, I guess you've heard about Tony." And I said, uh, I, I heard that he was going, but mm -hmm. he said, well, he says he's leaving next week. And so I picked up the phone and I called Tony. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've known Tony for years. He's a good friend. He, he spoke at my wedding. And uh, uh, I picked up the phone and I talked to him uh, ever so briefly. I'd already had the story, but I needed some mm -hmm. confirmation. And he confirmed it and I wrote it. But does that put you in, a, in an awkward position socially? I mean, I know I, someone who works for 60 Minutes the joke is always, you know, be careful what you say around him. But, you know, you you as you say, you kind of do go into a lot of different. You you exist in a lot of different worlds. 
when you're around your businessmen friends, are they kind of worried, oh man, don't, don't say this in front of Alex, he might blog about it? Uh, I think some people do, but other people, uh, uh, the ones that know me the best know that I would never sell out a friend. Mm -hmm. I mean, if Tony had said to me, don't write the story, I wouldn't have written it. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I didn't need to write that particular story. I just broken uh, even bigger news, I think. Uh, yeah, well, let's talk about that. That was the, elect the, the chief electrical inspector story. No, no, that was, that was well after that. I'm talking about the Carol Taylor mm. uh, possibly coming back to... Uh, to run uh, and rule the Liberal Party uh, right. post-departure uh, of, uh, of the current Premier. That was a good story, and I chased that down for, for three, four weeks, uh, and then spoke to somebody who had, uh, who had spoken to some cabinet ministers and had been party to a discussion with some organizers that were uh, pushing Carol to do it, and, and uh, that was a great story. I enjoyed doing that one. But uh, then there was the Parsons story, and then the electrical inspector. Well, let's talk about the electrical because that's one that I that um, I think is one of those rare stories that I've seen that mainstream news organizations have rightly credited a blogger for breaking it. I've seen your name many times in regular newspapers or you know, TV stories about it. Um, can you give us the kind of thumbnail sketch of that story? What what you found out and how you found out? Sure. Um, uh, after uh, having spent, uh, you know, 25 years in political backrooms, and uh, I have made, as I mentioned earlier, some significant, uh, uh, significant friendships and, and acquaintances, and uh, I received an email from someone who works at the city and said, you know, you might want to look at this. Uh, I enjoyed reading your stuff uh, when you were. Uh, a columnist at 24 hours and you did pieces for the Sun and for others and I thought that you might want to see what's happening we're under siege the and idea was that this inspector was being critical of safety uh, issues. He, he had identified a particular product uh, namely a fire alarm panel uh, at the Olympic Village uh, that he was concerned would malfunction under certain circumstances and um, beyond that there were others in his uh, branch who had also mentioned that there were other safety issues related to Olympic venues which have now been revealed um, right. uh, actually last week uh, in, a, in a major piece in the Vancouver Courier um, they were revealed to be true up until now the mayor has been saying that they were baseless um, but the guy that he replaced the former uh, city electrician with has now admitted that uh, what I've been saying for the last uh, month and a half, almost two months, is absolutely true. Right. Well, let's let's take a quick break for uh, commercial. But uh, when we come back, we'll talk about some of your other political uh, interests and potential aspirations. More with Alex Akumis in a moment.